Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be following on from the last video and we'll be covering the CyberArk EPM loosely connected devices. If you're unfamiliar with the CyberArk EPM loosely connected devices feature, I'll put some links in the video notes. But in summary, it's simply a way that CyberArk can discover local privilege accounts and onboard them into CyberArk. This is useful in environments, whether it's Active Directory domain joined or non-domain joined environments. And if, even if it's a domain joined environment, sometimes you might have endpoints that aren't necessarily always connected to the corporate network. As long as the endpoint has got internet connectivity, EPM is able to rotate that local privilege credential on a regular basis. To achieve the outcome of rotating local privilege accounts on our endpoints, first we'll configure the EPM credentials rotation policy in the EPM portal. From that, we'll end up with an EPM LCD key or secret that will onboard into Privilege Cloud. This allows the EPM portal to communicate with the Privilege Cloud API. Then we'll prepare the Windows Lucid device platform. This exists by default in a Privilege Cloud tenant. We just need to activate it and configure the settings as we desire. Then we'll go ahead and manually install an EPM agent on our Workstation ONE. And we'll use our Workstation ONE as a testbed to manually onboard the local admin account and rotate that account uh, once it's onboarded into Privilege Cloud. Then I'm going to show you how we can automate the EPM installation. There are many ways you can achieve this. In my lab, we'll do it with group policy. And then we'll use the automation features in Privilege Cloud to uh, do the account onboarding. And then finally, at the end, we'll confirm if our local Privilege accounts are indeed onboarded into Privilege Cloud uh, and rotated. And with that all said, I'll switch over to the lab now and show you how it's done. So I'm back in the lab and I've logged into EPM and we'll go over to administration first. And then at the bottom here, we'll have configuration. It's important to understand both license types will work for what we're trying to achieve today, which is the credential rotation. Uh, this will work for both the full protection and the credential rotation, of course. You've just got to make sure you've got enough licenses. Uh, in this environment, I'm just using a trial license for the time being. If I head back to account management, and what you can also do is go to your set. It's also a good idea to make multiple sets to suit your environment. I'm just going to stick with the default one for now and we'll hit edit here. Uh, you can change the name of them here and set the time zone. Most of the time you'll have this tick box here, credentials rotation only, and that's fine. Um, I, I can't tick that because I technically can't go to, uh, downgrade to that license. I'm going to select my time zone and click OK. And then we'll head back to management options up here and then click on our set that we were just looking at before. Now that we're here, we'll go to policies first. And if you've only got a credentials rotation license, all you'll see in here is this option here, which is all I'm interested in in this video. And we'll go and create a credentials rotation policy. Give this policy a name. Uh, you can obviously leave a description if you like. We need to provide the PVWA server URL. For Privilege Cloud, it will look like this. It will be your subdomain and privilegecloud.cyberarc.cloud. Uh, it might be easier to make the mistake of just putting your subdomain.cyberarc.cloud here. The reason why we have a, this longer method is because this is how EPM communicates with the API. I'm just going to set this to hours, and the minimum amount of hours you can have is, um, or uh, co connection retrieval interval is five hours. I'm going to select five hours for now as I can. And we'll click on generate to generate a key. And I'll just copy that and put that in my other screen here. And further down, I'm going to delete the default settings of applying this policy to all computers. Okay, we'll hit create and click yes. Our next goal is to import the EPM LCD key platform. And the reason why we need this is so that we can import the security key in the last step into that platform. I'll just show you the documentation now. And in here, we need to follow these steps. Uh, you can find the EPM LCD key platform in the marketplace, and that's found here. I've downloaded this ahead of time, 
So I'll head back to Privilege Cloud and we'll go down to Platform Management down here and we'll go Import Platform and I'll import this EPM LCD key. The EPM LCD key uh, will appear here. If we edit this platform under Automatic Password Management and General, this is locked down to the shared auth underscore internal safe. This is uh, done intentionally uh, and that this is where we'll store an account in that safe shortly. I'll head back to the accounts view and we'll hit add account. And this is an application and we'll select EPM LCD key and use the shared auth underscore internal. The username will be EPM underscore pass underscore gateway. And we need to customize the account name and put that in there like that. I'll paste in the key from the previous step and we'll hit add. And if we search for EPM, there's our, there's our key there. And this is what it should look like. Next, we'll create a safe to store the local administrator passwords on our endpoint. We'll create a safe and we'll give it a name. In this case, I've chosen to use Windows underscore LCD underscore endpoints, and I'm going to use the prod CPM here. I'll worry about the permissions at a later time. If I hit skip and create safe, it's gonna give myself full permissions to the safe. In your environment, you'll need to make decisions on who needs access to that safe. We'll now head back down to administration, then platform management here, and we'll expand out Windows, and there'll be a platform called Windows Loosely Device. We're going to duplicate this and we'll give it a name and click create. I'll then activate this. And we'll click on edit. We'll expand our automatic password management. Uh, in password change, this is already turned on. If we go down to the generate password here, I'm going to increase this to 30 characters and we'll hit apply and click OK. Next, we'll go back to the EPM portal and we'll come down to endpoints here and download center. In my case, I'm going to download the Windows 64 bit. Hit download there. I'm going to copy this key and click close. And that's downloaded the agent uh, here. So if I go to that agent there, we'll unzip this. And in my case, I'm not logged in as an administrator, so I'll just open PowerShell as admin. And we'll run the MSI installer. Go through the wizard. So I'll grab the installation key from earlier. And the configuration file will be in this directory here. And here's the config file that came with the MSI installer. We'll click next and install. It's a good practice to reboot the machine after the EPM agents installed. So I'll do that now. And we're back. I've logged into the workstation and I've signed into uh, Privilege Cloud uh, along with EPM. First, what we'll do is we'll add the local admin account for the workstation into CyberArk, uh, ready for EPM to rotate that account. So we hit add account here. We'll go to Windows, Windows Lucid device, and we created a safe earlier in the video for Windows LCD endpoints. The address that we'll use is the FQDN of the workstation. The username of the account that we want to manage is local admin. Uh, I currently know the password, but I don't need to provide that here. So we'll just simply hit add. So the EPM agent won't automatically rotate that password. Next, I'll search for workstation one. And we'll just make that a favorite. And first we'll go into this account here and we'll click on change and change again. The EPM agent won't automatically rotate this password straight away. Uh, remember we had that interval of five hours. So potentially this could take five hours for the password to change. I want to force that to change. So uh, if we go back down to the tray icon here 
Uh, right clicking on this and clicking on request settings does not uh, up make the EPM agent update the password. I'll click that anyway for demonstration purposes, but that doesn't change that. What we'll do to force a rotation is we'll go over to the EPM portal. We'll click on this set here. We'll come down to endpoints, enter the upgrade or uninstall agents option here. And we'll right click on this agent and we'll generate a secure token for this computer. I'll make this expire after one hour, so we'll generate that. And I'll copy that and we'll click close. Because we've created that secure token, I will need to come down to here again and request the settings so that, that this agent has the secure token or knows about that secure token. Offline, I have opened up PowerShell as admin. And if we run this command here, uh, we can monitor the EPM log. I'll put that command in the description of the video. Uh, so this will help us understand what's going on as we make changes. I'll open up a new tab in PowerShell here and we'll change directory to the EPM agent location. And what we need to do next is run a command to disable the protection for the EPM agent. So that's that token we got earlier. So once you run this command, you just simply press enter afterwards um, so that uh, agent is disabled or the protection is disabled, I should say. Next, we need to stop the service for the EPM agent. Now, if we open up services.msc and search for CyberArk EPM agent, we can now see it's stopped. Next, I'll run the command of bf underscore agent dash immediate LCD rotation. This sets a flag so that next time the agent starts, it will rotate its local admin password. So we'll go back to the services here and, and click on start. Of course, you don't need to do any of these steps. You could just simply wait for the agent to update its password. Uh, but for the demonstration, we need to speed this up. If we go back to the log here of the EPM agent, and we can see some information here. It's trying to change a password. It's changed a password, and that's successful. Uh, so that, that's a key piece of information there. And if we go back to Privilege Cloud, and click refresh here. We can see the CPM was successfully able to change the password. The CPM actually didn't change the, uh, it generated the password, but the EPM is the agent that did that change. So to prove that this works, we'll click on copy here. A quick way I like to test that this password is correct, I'll open up the Windows directory and go to the system32 folder and we'll find notepad.exe. I'll then do a shift right click on this and then go run as different user. So our local username is local admin. And then I'll paste in our password that we got from Privilege Cloud. We'll click OK. Now, if, if Notepad opens up, that tells me that we had the right password. Our next goal is to ensure that when we install the EPM agent, the local privileged accounts are automatically discovered and then they're onboarded into CyberArk and we rotate the accounts. So first we'll start off configuring the discovered accounts here. And there's a handy link here to take us to the documentation. And down in here we've got the uh, discover local accounts using EPM. So I'll leave this link in the description, but I'll just show you how that's done now. So we'll head back to Privilege Cloud. And the first set of instructions is to document your tenant ID. Uh, I'll, I'll just grab that now. And we'll head back over to EPM. We'll go down the bottom here and go to Advanced and then server configuration. And under the credentials rotation section, we've got the local admin discovery. We'll enable this. And this is where we put our tenant ID. We'll click save. Yes to that. I'll go back to the agents here. We'll go back to privilege cloud. 
come down to discovery rules we'll add a rule set and then we'll start building our rule set so we'll click on this node here first we'll select the type of windows and the subtype of loosely we'll add a condition here if the account is privileged, you could do other things here, but I'm simply going to go privileged. And that is a yes there. And then we'll select the platform of Windows, loosely device, that's the platform we created earlier. And the safe that we created earlier, Windows LCD endpoints. When we onboard the privilege account, I want this to rotate that secret and then we'll click activate. And we'll do this for future discovered accounts. And I forgot to give that a good rule set name. I'll go and fix that now. So we edit this. And at the top here, you can give the rule set a name. I'll just change it to LCD discovery rule. We'll save that and run for future accounts. Our next goal is to automatically deploy the EPM agent to all our workstations. There are many ways you could achieve this. In this lab, I'm going to do this via group policy and a script. Offline, I've configured this. I'll just go over to the DC now. Over on the DC, I've created a group policy object here under the workstations OU. It's simply running a script in this location here. And that script has the uh, install a file that we downloaded earlier in the video along with the config file and this script here I made uh, will uh, check to see if the e EPM agent exists if it doesn't uh, it will install the agent I'll leave this script in the video notes and if I go to Active Directory here I've prepared a second workstation I'm simply going to move that to the workstations OU so here we are on workstation 2 I'll open up PowerShell as admin and we'll do a GP update slash force and we'll do a GP result slash R. We'll see the EPM agent install uh, GPO is applied. So I'll restart this computer. And we can see the agent is installed. If I head back to the EPM portal, and refresh this view here, we can see our second workstation is here. And I'm recording this several days later. I've logged back into this lab, and if I go back to Privilege Cloud and search for WS2, we can see that this account was discovered at 7.49 p.m. and the change was executed at 10.39 p.m. And this happened on the same day that we installed the EPM agent on WS2. And just to also note, I haven't rebooted WS2 since uh, the EPM agent was installed. So that has worked successfully as expected. And if we go to discovery here and then discovery rules, and we can see this has increased to one for the number of applied accounts for the LCD discovery rule. And I'll finish the video here. Today we've demonstrated how we can fully automate the EPM installation, perform the local privilege account discovery, and account onboarding. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.